Did you know that Blender is better for graphic design than Photoshop? Almost anything that you are ever going to need for graphic design, you can do a lot of those things inside of Blender. It can make things a lot easier for you. With Blender, you can design logos, you can design textures, you can design patterns, you can design icons, you can design overlays, you can design text, whatever. You can do so many things inside of Blender. And I'm going to show you how. So with Blender, you can model out any object and you can render it as like a decal or with a transparent background or as like an overlay texture. So here's, here's what I did. I'm making this table for a dear client of mine. They want to have a custom table design for a beer pong table. Okay, so we need to put a custom texture, custom design with their company theme on the surface of this table. Now they sent me a gradient with the colors of their company, right? With the design of their company. This is like the theme, red, uh, golden, and purple gradient. Now, if you want to learn how to do more stuff like this, let me know in the comments. I can make more uh, paint net tutorials. That's what I'm using right now. Free image editing program. It's super simple. It's what I use all the time, right? But for now, I want to show you how I added this wavy pattern design on top of the surface, right? Because this is super easy to do in Blender. And whether you want to make any other kind of pattern, like a hexagon pattern, grid pattern, whatever, right? If you want to make a fucking bee nest, or if you want to make or beehive, if you want to make carbon fiber, whatever the fuck you're making, you can do most of that shit inside of Blender. Clouds, like if you want to have some kind of 2D design, this is fucking crazy what you can do. Let me show you guys. So in this case, I just need a wavy pattern. I already have this on from before, but this is how I model this thing, all right? Add a simple plane, go to edit mode, X, collapse, edges and vertices. Now you just have one vertex. I'm gonna extrude this vertex. I'm gonna add three loop cuts to it. I'll move one vertex to the side like this, a couple of times, and another one like this. Okay, just make sure it's a zigzag. Now I'm going to duplicate this, and with my 3D cursor placed over here as a pivot point, I'll rotate by 180 degrees. Maybe I'll do it one more time. All right, I'll remove the doubles, merge the vertices so everything is connected. And now I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier so that that way it's going to be more smooth. It's going to be like a, like a little curvy wave. I need to extrude this now to add some thickness like this because when I add thickness on the Z axis, now I can extrude everything again, right click and use Alt S to make sure that everything is equally thin if we look at it from top view, right, like this. Which means now I can just delete the top faces and the vertices and I have a perfect two-dimensional flat little wave. You can also make this thinner if you want by just sliding it. Boom, look at how beautiful that is. All you gotta do now is add an array modifier. This is just super simple, super basic modeling stuff, all right? Anybody can do this. You don't need me to teach you how to use array modifiers and how to use the extrusion tool or anything like that. And now we have a beautiful surface of waves. Now we're gonna render this as an image with a transparent background so we can use it as an overlay for our gradient. And this is gonna be the same technique you would use if you design a logo or something. Maybe you have a little logo which is like a circle, like this, extruded out. And maybe you have a little smiley, right? Something like this. You duplicate this, this is gonna be one eye. This is gonna be another eye. And maybe you wanna have a smile. Boom, 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 boom. We're gonna extrude this out. It's the same, right? Subdivide that, yeah, you got a smiley. So it's the same technique, whatever you're modeling in two dimensions. You can change the materials on this. This can be red, this can be black, whatever. You figure it out. But this is the same thing you're gonna do. And now we're gonna apply the array modifier. We're going to add a color to our material. This is very important because when we add a material, I wanted to say we're gonna add a material to our object because we need to add a color to the material. We're gonna remove the specularity because we don't want any reflections when we render this thing. We don't want this part to be shiny. We want it to just be a flat color. Maybe increase the roughness or something. We need to set a color. Just choose any color, but there has to be a color. I'll show you why. It's very important that you have a color. And maybe it's also good to have some emission just so we don't have to deal with lighting problems afterwards. right? Just I don't, I don't wanna have to light this scene or anything. I'll just put this emission to yellow. It can be any color just as long as it's a color. Now you're gonna take your camera you're gonna to go to top view with seven on the number pad. You're gonna use control, alt, and zero to place your camera, to align your camera with your view. So now your camera is exactly above the scene. And it's very important that you set your camera in the camera properties when you select it. You're gonna set the type to orthographic, okay? Because this is gonna remove any, any pro projection and stretching on the sides. If you have like orthographic, if you have a perspective distortion or something, maybe on focus or something, you don't wanna have any of that. Everything is just like two dimensional, all right? And you're gonna use this number here, the orthographic scale, to control basically the zoom, how much you, how you want your camera to cover, okay? 
and just put everything inside of your frame here. Now, you also want to go to render properties, go to film and check transparent background because you want to have a transparent background so you can replace the background with a custom image such as this one, all right? And now, go to EV, just, it's, it's faster in EV, you don't need any, any cycles, reflections or lighting, anything like that. Just use EV, render, I don't know, 16, 32 samples, whatever, it doesn't matter. Hit F12 and just wait four seconds. This is already rendered, right? Now, you want to render this as a transparent image. So go to image, save as, pictures, wave, pattern, whatever. Set the file format to PNG and check RGBA. Now let me just say this, when you're watching this video, I don't know how long this is gonna be, probably like 10 minutes. This, if you if you do this, like when I do this, it takes me two minutes to do this. So it's probably faster than doing this shit in Photoshop, all right? So it, I'm just explaining it now so it's taking more time, but if you use this technique, this shit's so fast, you don't have to worry about, oh, it's easier in Photoshop. It's not worth learning Photoshop for this shit, okay? Save image. We're gonna go to paint. This is the one I have from before, but we're gonna open up an image. We just save this wave pattern. Now we have this thing. I'm gonna take this, control C, I'm gonna add a new layer in paint on top of what I have here. Keep canvas size, whatever. Now I have this wave shit on top of my, on top of my pattern. And now the, the reason that we have a color is because I can just take this image, I go to adjustments, hue saturation, and now I can change the color to anything that I want. It can be blue, it can be green, it can be red, it can be unsaturated, it can be more saturated, it can be black and white, I can change it. If you don't have a color, if you just have white lines, you can't control the hue anymore, the saturation. See, now it's much harder. You would have to fill it in with a bucket, which is gonna change the shape a little bit, all right? You can just change the hue since it already had some color. So it's better to render it with a little bit of color. And now I have this image, I can just flatten that image, flatten, I can save it. I don't wanna save it because I already have a good example from before. But if I just save this, control S, I can open it up in Blender and just use it as a texture, since this is just a regular image, a regular texture. I just UV unwrap this, I load it as an image into my material, and I put it on top of a table. This is exactly what happened here, all right? I'm gonna do more shit like this for this table. This is not finished yet. I'm gonna put some more labels on this, and this product, along with other shit that I model on my channel, you're also gonna be able to download this on Patreon, all right? So if you wanna support my channel, or if you wanna see more in-depth tutorials where I'm modeling and doing high-level shit like car interiors and tanks and stuff, check out my, uh, my Patreon. You're gonna find a shitload of content. I have like 20, 30 hours of tutorials there, downloads and everything everything so check that out and uh, if you have any questions let me know and let me know what you want to see next